right. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Hopefully you had plenty of time to engage and work with our um, social identity theory, critical thinking question. And hopefully these questions are really the idea is that as you learn the social psychology, as you learn the concept, you then apply it to your life, which allows you to cement your knowledge and understanding of the concept. So that if someone comes up to you, right, and you're having a conversation about well, how do people define themselves? How do people come up with who they are and define, you know, and answer that question, who am I? You can engage in an educated conversation, right, about um, how exactly it is that people do this, okay? So today we're going to talk about self-schema theory, and I really want to take my time on self-schema theory because even the concept of schema in psychology can be confusing. So I want to make sure that I really treat this question um, or this concept with the time and the patience that it takes. Okay? So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain self-schema theory, and also you should be able to define a schema, okay? what schema means. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is a schema? So a schema is a cognitive, so brain, mental, and memory structure for organizing the world. Okay? So this is the way that we as humans come to learn about the world and organize what we know about the world. And if we think about the example of how we learn about animals, okay? the first time you ever saw a new animal, you didn't instantly just say like, oh, that's a right, giraffe or that's an elephant. There was a process. So if we look at the image on the left, okay, so we have... A little girl, she sees a dog and she says, doggy, okay? And likely someone has either brought the dog to her and said, this is a dog, right? Or she's seen TV and they talk about it being a dog, okay? And then she's with her dad and she points at a cat and says, doggy. So clearly based on this, she does not actually know what a dog is in comparison to another animal. Whereas you and I, know the difference between a dog and a cat, and so the dad's going to explain to her the difference. Here's some ideas. Maybe she learns that a dog barks, or maybe she learns that a, a, you know, a dog is bigger than a cat, and she knows that a dog licks you, and she also knows that, you know, what her dog looks like. But each of these things kind of comes into play at a different time, and so she's building schema about a dog. We also have a schema about um, an office, right? In an office, there's a desk, there's a computer, there's a chair, there might be a bookshelf, there might be a fan or a lamp. And you see how I'm starting to build. That's because as I've seen different offices, I've seen um, all of the different things that could be associated with an office. Whereas someone who has either A, never seen an office, or B, has only seen one office, their understanding of the word office is going to be limited. But as they know more, it builds out kind of like a branch, right? It kind of branches out like a tree, right? So if the roots, the base of the tree is office, each new thing that you learn about an office starts to branch out, okay? And then your tree starts to get really big about how you understand what an office is. That's why when you're learning, it's important to know vocab because then you can build, right? Um, and, and, and as you learn different facts and ideas, it helps you deepen your knowledge because your schema or your tree is building. Okay? So think of schema like, like a tree, right? Where there's a foundation, there's roots. And then the more you learn about that thing, the bigger your tree grows. And your schema is that, that collection of knowledge you have about things. So maybe take a pause and try to think about how you built your schema about different things. How did you build your schema? about parks? How did you build your schema about schools, right? And, and you can go on and on and kind of help really solidify that. And I'm really spending some time on this because self-schema theory, the definition is kind of confusing. And so hopefully solidifying this definition will help us kind of move through the rest of the slides much easier. So self-schema theory that the book definition is a way to think about how the self-concept is formed, whereby memory structures that summarize and organize our core beliefs about self-relevant information create a cognitive framework within which individuals interpret the events of their lives. A really short version, my short definition is how our memory summarizes and organizes our beliefs about self-relevant information. Now, when you think about 
what is self-relevant information. Part of this can be as you grow and as you encounter different things, what is self-relevant information changes quite a bit. Okay? For example, driving is not self-relevant information to a three-year-old. Driving quickly becomes self-relevant information to a teenager and a young adult. And so you can see how um, as you grow and learn more about driving, you start to have some ideas about the ways to drive, about the rules and regulations of driving, right? And you can see how that book, that, that tree, that driving tree becomes bigger, the more relevant it becomes to you. And you start to make some judgments about it. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. When we think about social comparisons, we can kind of see some of those comparisons of cultures as kind of information that we use to form our self-concept so that, you know, we may not think necessarily about the, uh, our, our dress, okay? But then as we see another culture dress a certain way, we start to make judgments about the way we dress. So, for example, if your schema, your tree for dressing is you wear shoes, a shirt, pants, right, and that's it. If you encounter a culture where people only wear um, long gowns, that changes the way that you think about your own type of dress. And you either solidify and say, the way that I dress in my culture is right and good. Or you say, the way that they dress in that culture looks much better than mine. Okay? So your tree has now taken on a different form. Because first you just had your idea about what it's like to dress. Now you have another way potentially of learning to dress and that changes things. So let's next go to a scenario. Okay. And as we look at these four scenarios, the first one, let's start at the top left. So you wake up late on Wednesday morning. Okay. And you've got to get to work. The question you ask is, is your lateness because you are lazy or is it because you're tired from working hard? So you're kind of in this cognitive choice right, in this time where you're making a decision about what your judgment is going to be, depending on what you already believe about waking up late, okay? For example, if you have colleagues that wake up late a lot, and you think, oh, those people are just so lazy, right, then it's likely that your schema is going to suggest to you that you waking up late is a sign of laziness. However, if you have before said, oh, that colleague works so hard, so it makes sense that they're up late, then your schema might suggest to you the same thing, that you're a hard worker. The next thing, let's look at SpongeBob in the bottom left corner. You can say that you're speeding on your way to work. Are you speeding because you're a dangerous, reckless driver? Or is it because you're responsibly trying to get to work on time? Your former beliefs or schema about speeding are going to come into play. Your former beliefs and ideas about work are going to come into play. Is it more important to get to work on time than it is to follow the law? Is Have you viewed speeding as, oh, it's fine as long as I'm not going too fast? Or are you a strict, got to stick to the rules person? Your former beliefs and ideas about speeding are going to determine how you view yourself as you're speeding to work. You see that, that connection, okay? Let's go to the next one. Bottom right, as you get to work, you get coffee first, okay? That's an that's a action in your social environment. Does that mean that you're addicted to coffee and you're trying to procrastinate by getting coffee before working? Or are you trying to get focused so you can be more efficient? That's gonna depend on what you already believe about coffee, what your brain has already decided it means when someone gets coffee at work. Is your schema that coffee is an addictive thing and it's, it's not something that's necessary to get focused? Or is your schema that a responsible good worker would try to get coffee first? And the last one on the top right is you ignore coworkers and go straight to your desk. Are you rude or are you motivated to get your work done for the day? Again, that depends on your already established beliefs about interaction with people. If you think, right, if your schema suggests that if someone's ignoring someone because they have to work, then that is a responsible choice they're making. Versus if someone is um, ignoring someone and no matter what the circumstance, that is rude, then in that case, your schema 
would tell you to believe one way or the other about who you are in your self-concept. So those are four examples of how you have this potential to interpret one situation a different way based on your former beliefs and ideas about it. What this also means is that different people can interpret that differently, okay? So different people can see the same situation and based on their schema, that will determine how they, what judgment they make about themselves, okay? So let's summarize the work example, okay? So your efforts to get to work, that's all four of those steps that we just took, could either lead you to think of yourself as lazy, dangerous, addicted, and rude, or that you are hardworking, responsible, highly motivated, and determined to succeed. Ultimately, whether you go with one or two, it depends on how you interpret the flow of events in your life, and it depends on which schemas you have activated. And the schemas that already exist about each of those things in our mind will determine how we perceive ourselves in the situation. Okay? So again, the, the self-schema theory is all about how we interpret social situations based on what we already know. That is different from the first theory, social comparison theory, right? Because in social comparison theory, we're figuring out who we are based on other people. Social identity theory, we're de uh, deciding who we are based on where we're from. Self schema theory says we're deciding who we are based on what we already know and believe about certain things that happen in our lives. So a summary for self-schema theory is that uh, it suggests that we organize our beliefs about ourselves into mental structures in memory. Okay. We, we, we collect, we build our trees, we plant our trees and they grow, and that determines what we uh, believe about ourselves and what we say about ourselves, okay? So this is another one that is a little longer than I would hoped. So what I'm gonna say is that the critical thinking challenge for this one is due tomorrow at 11.59 uh, p.m. That will end our uh, unit three, right? We're just gonna do one learning standard per unit. So that will end our unit three um, critical thinking challenges. So for your assessments, these three all count. So the critical thinking challenge for each theory is how you'll be um, graded in terms of critical assessments. All right, so have a great day and I will see you again Friday.